Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, today we will talk about cervical reticulopathy. Actually, uh, I will focus uh, uh, <coughs> on relative anatomy. I think it is uh, the key to understand the spine. Uh, cervical spine started by articulation between occiput and C1. C1 is atlas. So between occiput, occipital condyle at the side of the foramen magnum, there is occipital condyle articulating with a facet of C1. Then C1 and C2, then from C3 subaxial. C0, C1, C2, this is called the upper cervical. And we have a separate anatomy session inside cervical trauma. I will focus now on the subaxial anatomy from C3 to C7. This is the upper surface of one of the cervical vertebrae. This is the upper surface I am seeing now from above. Axial view of one of the cervical vertebrae. This is the upper surface, while this is the lower surface. This is the body. From the body, there is foramen transversarium inside the transverse foramen. Transverse process, there is foramen transversarium. This part which connects the body with the posterior element is called the pedicle. So uh, I want to take a pedicular screw in the cervical spine. I will start very far lateral to be in direction of the pedicle, to be in the uh, vertebral body. Cervical pedicle, the pedicle all over the spine is a core of cancellous form, cylindrical core of cancellous form, surrounded by cortical bone. Connect the anterior element with the posterior element. Above the pedicle, there is a facet, superior articular process, and below, on the other side, on the lower side, is the inferior articular process. As I inform you in the lumbar spine, they are aligned like this. Superior articular facet is like this, directed anteriorly. And the inferior articular process directed posteriorly. They are located posteriorly, but its articular surface is facing anteriorly. The nerve, this is here, the spinal canal. Coming out of the spinal canal, there is a spinal cord. Coming out of the spinal cord, root. Root. So, the root is angled about 45 degree of the spinal canal, of the spinal cord. Below it, pedicle and above him, the pedicle of the upper vertebrae. Here is pedicle and he is passing above it. And there is a pedicle of the upper cephalic vertebrae. And posteriorly, there is a superior articular process of not the inferior. The inferior still lies behind the superior articular process. So in the canal, this is the foramen where the, the spinal nerve root coming out, exiting and coming out, bounded by pedicle below, pedicle above, Posteriorly, so, uh, the superior articular process and the anteriorly is the vertebral body and the disc and this part of the vertebral body is called 
un Senate process. Un Senate process is coming from the postural superior part of the body. So think about the unsenate process when articulating with the other vertebrae as a chair. As a chair, like this. The unsenate process is coming here superiorly to articulate with the facet on the sides of the superior vertebrae. This is the superior vertebrae. So, if I want to decompress the foramen here, I can come anteriorly through the disc, then hitting and hugging the posterior surface of the unsenate process to avoid the vertebral artery in the foramen transverse area and the uh, root. I have to put my on here after opening the disc. I have to go there, hug here. Or posteriorly by unroofing, taking, this is the lamina. This is the lamina and this is the lamina and the forming the spinous process in between, in the midline. The spinous process is Buffett, except, except T7. Of course, here at the anterior part of the body is the anterior longitudinal ligament. Posteriorly is the posterior longitudinal ligament. So now we know that this is the body. This is the inferior articular process to articulate with the art superior articular process of the cephalic vertebrae. This is the pedicle which connects the posterior superior part of the body with the posterior element. This is the foramen transversarium inside the transverse process to transmit the vertebral artery and the vein except T7. This is the lateral view. This is the body. This is the unsenate process to articulate with the facet or recesses on the inferior part of the side of the body of the upper vertebrae. This is the transversal process. This is foramen transversarium. This is the superior articular process. As you see that the superior articular process is inclined sagittally about 45. So if I want to put a screw, I have to be parallel to this facet. If not in the uh, in the lateral mass, we will see later. This is how do you think about the articulation between the ancus and uh, the unsenate process, which is uh, joint of Loshka, other name. This is the orientation of the facet 45 in the cervical region. One of the anatomical landmark to decide where you are is the anterior tubercle of the C6. There is an anterior tubercle here and there is a posterior tubercle there. Suppose, embryologically, the counterpart in the thoracic region forms the rib. Here, no rib. The anterior tubercle at the C6, you can feel it to feel the pulsation of the carotid tubercle to avoid this uh, structure. This is one of the landmark. There is other landmark we will see later. This is the anatomy of the intervertebral 
foramen, as I inform you, ventrally, the uncovertebral joint, which I inform you, this is the articulation between the facet antennas process below and above, uh, <coughs> the borders of the pedicle above and the below, and the superior articular process. Again, this is the lateral side of the cervical region. This is the pedicle above and the pedicle below and uh, the root here, uncinate. Our ancovertebral joint is there. Superior articular process posteriorly. Again, this is another MRI anatomy. This is the spinal cord and the root is coming above it about 45 degree here so if I want to decompress anteriorly to avoid the vertebral artery which is located nearly at the middle of the vertebral body this is the vertebral body and it locates medially so if I didn't distract the anco vertebral joint here and going there at the corner and the hug my Kerosene here, I will decompress the nerve and willn't uh, distract the vertebral artery, anterior longitudinal ligament, posterior intervertebral disc, intervertebral central nucleus bulbosus, as I inform you in the lumbar session, uh, and peripheral annulus fibrosis annulus fibrosis attached to the bone so it is collagen one bone one and nucleus pulposus with its gelatinous material full of water H2O so collagen two anco vertebral joint lateral mass lateral mass we, I, I, I see the vertebrae from the above and from down axially this is the back view. I am seeing the vertebrae from the back. Now I am uh, I'm opening the spine midline posteriorly. This is the spinal process and this is the lamina. This is the inferior articular process and this is the superior articular process. The superior articular process is lying anteriorly and the inferior articular process is lying posteriorly then this is the inferior articular process and hugging the superior articular process superior articular process and the inferior articular process the area in between them are the lateral mass so the lateral mass started from the lateral part, the connection between the lamina and the lateral part of both facets here. This is the, uh, sorry, medial part of the facet. And this is the lateral part of the facet. So all this area is the lateral mass. Lateral mass is one of the possible screws I can put. This is the facet from the lateral side. So if I want to put in the lateral mass, not in the pedicle, lateral mass is the most common fixation in the subaxial uh, spine. <coughs> I am, I will be guided by the facet joint. You can put needle here to see the direction of the facet and to put your screw parallel to this uh, facet. This is roughly, this is a rough description. I just want you to know the, uh, the general aspect of anatomy, then you can build it up and go forward. Again, in the lumbar spine, I inform you that the pedicle is named, uh, that the nerve root is named according to the pedicle, it passed below. In the cervical spine, it passed above. So if I inform you cervical, Three, I can go to the pedicle and what I, I see above the pedicle is three. Below is four. Below is four, 
according to the pedicle below. So the nerve root from C2 to 7 according to the pedicle they pass above. But at but C8 is coming in the foramen between 7 and the T1. So the foramen in 7 and T1 the starting of the reverse the starting of the reverse that's the cause which makes the root coming below the pedicle in the lumbar spine C8 which hasn't a corresponding vertebrae other important landmarks in the uh, cervical spine hyoid at C3 thyroid cartilage between 4 and 5 and the cricoid and the carotid tubercle and at C6 anterior cervical uh, approach is an important classic approach to the cervical and you have to know every details about this it's, it's called Smith Reposum. and the other common name is the facial plane facial approach because all the approach is through facial layer you have superficial and deep fascia all over your body the superficial fascia is above platysma there is a muscle here covered by a fascia above superficial fascia and below platysma is deep fascia but the deep fascia below platysma has a three layer superficial investing this is the superficial investing part superficial investing part of the deep part of the fascia as you see, it is split to take the sternocleidomastoid. The middle layer is the pretracheal layer. This is the strap muscle. So when you open here, guided by the lateral border of the sternocleidomastoid, you are taking the strap muscle here and there. This is the pretracheal middle layer and this is the prevertebral deep layer so investing pretracheal and prevertebral so you have to go through this layer as i inform you foramen transversarium has passed the vertebral artery but C7 has no vertebral artery. This C7, uh, which has no vertebral artery, uh, 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 allow us to do uh, two, uh, 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 two maneuvers, special maneuvers. Actually, I inform you that the subaxial spine uh, can uh, uh, most common uh, posterior type of fixation is lateral mass screw but C7 you can put a pedicle screw because the pedicle is large enough to accommodate a screw and there is no vertebral artery so I can put the pedicle screw which is so close to the uh, pedicle close uh, uh, too close to the vertebral artery here do you imagine here there is the vertebral artery so you can injure it uh, easily so there is no vertebral artery in C7 so I can put the uh, pedicle screw here and also I can break the cervical spine to correct the kyphosis at this level because there is no vertebral artery
while opening the cervical spine anteriorly, there is two nerves. One of the nerves is superior laryngeal nerve, which can be hit it superiorly in the, uh, say, C3-4 level, when you are doing a discectomy for upper cervical level as C3-4. C4. They are responsible for high pitch sound during singing. So if you injury the superior laryngeal nerve, you can. The other nerve is the recurrent laryngeal. As you see, recurrent laryngeal on the left side pass directly around the arch of the aorta. Recurrent because it recur after downward side. It recur coming in the carotid sheath. It recur in tracheoesophageal group directly on the left side. But if you notice in the right side, around the right subclavian, it take an oblique course. So in lower cervical approaches, I can hit the nerve here, theoretically, theoretically. It can be hit here, because it takes more oblique course from the right subclavian to, to go into its groove. Its injury called hoarseness of voice, if bilateral tracheostomy is needed, basogenesis. After knowing the anatomy, you can imagine what can compress the, the uh, root or cord. If you have a spear coming first to the disc, the disc here, if it is herniated, it can compress either the root, so it is radiculopathy, or the cord, which is called the myelopathy, if there is a cord, change it. The next session, inshallah. So, disc here, if herniated, if compressed here, it will be myelopathy, if, if, if compressed there, it will be radiculopathy, or uh, alternate process coming Arthritic, arthritic, so osteophyte can come from here. OBLL, which is more uh, 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 posterior longitudinal ligament hypertrophy, which is more likely to compress on the cord, causing myelopathy. Superior articular uh, process facet arthrosis here can cause cervical radiculopathy, so this spear from antenate process, superior articular process, posterior longitudinal ligament is the causes of the pathology of either the nerve or the cord. If the nerve it is called the radiculopathy, if the cord it is called the myelopathy. This is the pathogenesis, natural history. Regarding radiculopathy, as lumbar disc disease mostly will inshallah uh, spontaneous resolution occur so <coughs> you can aid him with your medication and wait but don't wait so much as in lumbar disc disease because he, you fear of irreversible damage of the cord so if you have a motor weakness not a progressive motor you will attack. But if you have sensory manifestation, you can wait up to one and a half to three months if there is, <coughs> if there is gradual improvement. So, spontaneous resolution is a rule in about 75%, but please, uh, you don't want to go into myelopathy. History and physical examination, I think we, we finish everything regarding history and physical examination in the examination session, starting by proper history taking and proper examination. Don't forget in the examination about the sperling sign. 
spelling sign spelling to the same side. So if you tell the head, rotate the head to the same side like this, you will, and with slight extension, you will close the forum. And if it is already uh, narrowed because of arthritic, arthritic processes, it will cause a pain, radicular pain. And it is the most important, one of the important signs to differentiate between cervical and shoulder pathology. Again, this is a spurling test, extension and rotation to the same side. If this side has a pain, upper limb, so mostly it is something inside the foramen. During uh, the session of examination, I forget to inform you about the maneuver of biceps and radial and the triceps reflex. Biceps reflex, you are holding. You are holding the patient's arm on your arm, like this, and putting, stressing on the bicep and hitting. Uh, the bicep tendon. At the same position, you hit the pecuradialis. Pecuradialis tendon, you feel here. So, you feel here. In that position. Triceps. Triceps. You are holding his elbow and hitting the triceps tendon. Radiograph. For sure, X-ray is the routine, however, it doesn't uh, give you a lot of information, but if there is a persistent pain more than one month or neurological manifestation or red flag sign, you will order X-ray. X-ray is AB and lateral oblique, so it takes the uh, bar uh, defect if you suspect. Uh, flexion extension to differentiate instability you, you will see later uh, if you have to exclude the spinal instability uh, tumor any destructive lesion anyway it isn't for radiculopathy itself of course MRI is the study of the choice CT also is important for me I do CT regularly if I plan for surgery. CT, CT with myelography is only uh, asked when the MRI is contraindicated, usually with pacemaker incompatible with MRI. Some pacemaker is incompatible with MRI. I think it is nowadays uh, all uh, be compatible. But I, uh, I have maybe uh, since two to three years when I was uh, in uh, Razi Hospital, my dear hospital, uh, I faced with some uh, two cases. They have uh, a pacemaker and with the report they are incompatible with MRI. Why I do CT for uh, regular when I do operation, when I plan for operation? I, I'm sorry for bad quality uh, MRI. This is uh, this is a vertebral body. This is the cord, and this is a disc. You see a disc, but when I did CT, it is a huge calcified disc. There is a huge difference in the management between this and this. If this is soft disc, it is easy to manage. Hard disc is very hard to manage. So CT to differentiate between soft and the hard disc, calcified disc. Another cause is ossification of posterior longitudinal ligament. You can differentiate between disc and uh, and ossification of posterior longitudinal ligament. Uh, you will see uh, uh, on the next session in myelopathy uh, except through the CT.
differential diagnosis. As I inform you in the lumbar disc, there is an intraspinal lesion at the cord, at the level of the cord, distal to the level of the root, intrinsic like diabetes or extrinsic. And usually extrinsic causes is important like angina and uh, shoulder pathology. Please be careful. A huge list you can classify according the same as uh, lumbar disc disease. Non-operative management is the rule for you. If the patient presents below one month, you suspect that your medication will be effective, inshallah. After three months, it will be less effective. Selective root injection. So if you, by examination, you uh, find that uh, L3, uh, T, uh, T, uh, sorry, T5, 6, uh, or 6 is affected, you can selectively go to inject. It is a double uh, head procedure, diagnostic and therapeutic, just for confirmation. Surgical management, persistent radiculopathy despite non-operative uh, management will uh, non-operative management and progressive weakness you have to go for surgery don't wait a lot time for the fear of myelopathy you can decompress either anteriorly through anterior cervical discectomy and diffusion or posteriorly through the posterior foramen through uh, taking part of the lamina as I inform you in the image and taking part of the superior uh, articular process and do uh, lamino foraminotomy posteriorly so either anteriorly or posteriorly the anterior approach is Smith Robertson anterior approach of the hip is Smith Peterson Complication usually from retraction of the esophagus, you can uh, dysphagia is a uniform symptom, uh, uh, uniform complaint before. So, I inform the patient about dysphagia, this is uh, sure. Superior laryngeal for <coughs> uh, injury can cause loss of high tension, uh, pitched uh, voice, recurrent. Horses of voice, if unilateral, bilateral, it can cause suffocation. Pseudoarthrosis is a problem, can cause, despite of uh, trying of doing a fusion, it isn't healed. Of course, the incidence increase with uh, increasing the number of levels. Single level ACDF can be as uh, more than 95% fusion rate down to uh, 60 percent uh, for three level fusion uh, decrease if asymptomatic you didn't do anything for the patient if symptomatic you can go posteriorly adjacent level as usual what is Horner syndrome just to know ptosis meiosis anhydrosis while I am doing a retraction deeply at the pre-vertebral fascia, there is a two muscles passes longitudinally is longus coli. Below the longus coli is sympathetic shape. If I didn't put the retractor, my retractor deep below longus coli, I will compress the sympathetic chain and can cause horner especially in the lower level. Please comment. This is an X ray, lateral, lateral X ray. Uh, there is a straightening of the cervical spine and maybe here narrowing their osteophyte. Uh, some osteophyte here. What is next? Please don't ignore AB. Even it is not relevant for this case. Don't go to another investigation without going, 
without asking of the another view. If he giving lateral X-ray, ask about AB. If he giving you AB, ask about lateral X-ray. If you didn't see that the X-ray is uh, <coughs> fulfill criteria, like here, here fulfill criteria, you say the cervicothoracic junction and cervicooccipital junction. The same if you see for the forearm, you didn't see the wrist or the elbow, you has you have to inform your examiner or in real life to repeat the X-ray and ask for to another view. Also, don't advance to the further investigation without asking uh, about uh, proper history and examination. If the, in the Viva uh, exam, he guided you directly to MRI, okay, but ask uh, about basic, stick to basic all the time. In the MRI, you found a significant disc at uh, this level. Actually, it is not black to be calcified, so it is mostly a soft disc. This is two, three, four, five, six. Five, six disc here at this level. It is more to the left side. This is the left side usually. This is the left side. This is central or prostrolateral bar and according to manifestation you will manage starting by uh, uh, medical treatment and uh, you can do injection then ACDF or for single level you can go posteriorly through laminoforominectomy if simple soft disc you can go posterior to avoid the dangerous of the anterior area how you would manage this patient what is the surgery if it is the revision surgery in the anterior cervical you are worried about thing yes if if the previous surgeon do a epilateral recurrent laryngeal so I have to go to the same side either to the same side or alternative approach so I have to document that it is already injured or no because if I injury the other side I can cause stridor uh, suffocation and needs tracheostomy thank you so much and the other session the next session will be my office, inshallah, in this week.